Good morning to you all. Welcome to the video conference to disclose the results of the third semester of 2022 of VITIA. This video conference is being recorded and the replay can be accessed in the website of the company as well in the official YouTube channel. And the presentation is also available for download. We inform that all participants will only be watching the video conference. And later we are going to begin the Q&A and then we are going to give more instructions. Before continuing, I reinforce that the declarations have the basis, the creeds and suppositions by VTA and the current information available by the company. These declarations can have risks and uncertainties having in view that they are about future events. So they depend on circumstances that can or not occur. Investors, analysts, and journalists must take into consideration that events related to this current economic background may make the results be material different from what were pre predicted by them. We have present here Mr. Wilson Romanini, CEO of Mr. Alessandro Ganero Frizo, CRO and DRI, and Mr. Henrique Monteiro, Director of P&D. Now I would like to pass the floor to Mr. Wilson Romanini, which will begin the presentation. Please, Wilson, you can continue. Good morning to you all, who we are going to present the results from VITIA in the third trimester. And like Tiago said, you have any doubts and clarifications to be made, we are going to be available to help you at the end of our presentation. Putting here the numbers from VITIA, you can see that the gross revenue from the biological products, which one thing that we have been emphasizing a lot, in the third trimester was of 99.9 million, a growth of 36.1% in relation to the third trimester of 2021. And when we take the nine months of the year, we have 153.7 million, an increase of 41.7% in relation to the nine months of 2021. When we take our specific line of Biological Defensives, a new program in the company, we had 54.7 million in the third quarter of 2022, 41.2 above the third, third quarter of 2021. And when we take the nine months, we made 98.4 million, 46.4% above the nine months of 21. Our net revenue amounted to 307.7 million in the third quarter. We have an increase of 8.5% in relation to the third quarter of 2021. And when we take the nine months of the year, we have 621.0 million. We are 22.3% in the nine months of 2021. And in the net income was 77.4 million, also in the third quarter. We had 37.9% increase in relation to the previous year. And when we take the nine months of 2022, we have 98.2 million, an increase of 51.1% in relation to the nine months of the previous year. The IBITDA totaled 116.1 million. 27% more than the third quarter of the previous year and 158 million in the nine months, 36.2 in more than the previous year. Our CapEx totaled 14.6 million. We had a decrease of 15%, but in relation to the year, we have an increase of 26.7% totaling 49.8 million. Talking about our scenario, our performance, risks and opportunities and positionings, VTA has been doing a very intense work in the market of biological products. We launched this year a bio, uh, biofertilizers where we have an action that is very intensive we're talking about the performance of the macronutrients, mainly in the issue of the fossils, this is the center of our work within the company. When we talk about this, we truly talk about of new products within the market and also in a better formation 
of the commercial team. We had in this year, and not only of 2022, but also in 2021, an instability in the market of NPK. This market was complicated this year. We had in the beginning of the year the expectation of the lack of materials, and then we ended up uh, having the lack of, of NPK. You're going to see in the other presentations that we were not able to have a good performance. We had canceling of, of requests done mainly in the first semester, and then the market started to go down, and our clients had difficulties of making the final client that is the producer to buy the product. So we had a lot of leftovers. When we talk about this scenery, talking about the issue of organo minerals, we did a restructuring that was very intense in our pr process of fabrication, generating gain and having an optimization in the sense. And the other point that is very important is that we did a great reformulation in the commercial part. We segregated this line with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a company that has a very big portfolio. And it was very clear for us that the team that was doing basically everything within the own guideline of the company, focusing effectively in the biodefensors, the biological products, and also the fertilizers, the special fertilizers, the foliar fertilizers, we have seen that we were building it, we needed to build a different team in this sense. So we hope that in the next year, we begin to reach the desired performance in this area of organo minerals. We had a, clim a diff different climate talking about this scenario of 2022, 2023, this is a, a region that has been growing but this ends up impacting, we lose a revenue from the company from there. And this gave a smaller relativity and talking about effectively, even of scenarios we had this year, the year that began well in terms of crops, plantations, we have some regions with certain difficulties, climate difficulties, Obviously, the crops are still in the beginning. This ends up not interfering so much in the possibility of productivity, but we, we wish it or not, this ends up having an impact in the movementations because if you not have a favorable climate, obviously the producer will reduce their exposure in buying inputs. This is normal. And talking about truly on the issue of this scenario, despite the increases that we had in the inputs, the income is still favorable. We have here the soy having good profit. When you do a consortium of the corn and soy, this soy is still bigger when you do this consortium of soy and cotton, the profit is better. Coffee is not in the levels that we have seen in the year of 2021, 2021, 22, but it still has profit, but the market of sugar cane is still a little difficult, but in general, the producer has results in its operations. We had there, the war, the conflict with Ukraine and Russia. And as I said, now we, there is this expectation of scarcity of inputs, and this did not happen. The Brazilian government was agile in its negotiations. The companies, fearful to have the lack of inputs, ended up having greater material. And now there is a certain lot left over of inputs in the market. One thing that we have been seeing in a clear way is the notion of the producer of the sustainable practices. This appears in this our world of biodefensors of biological products. And for you to have 
a notion. We already began to do works with highly satisfactory results con by conducting a crop, talking about the part of defense, only with biological products. For you to have an idea, we have data of incrementing production of around 15% and with a reduction of cost of around 10%. This year, we are doing basically 30 experiments of this nature with many places in Brazil and in many properties. We begin to see in a clear way that the biodefensors are capable of substituting in total the, the chemical defensors, obviously there is a technology which are the herbicides. This technology is not made available. There is no technology now that made this available for us to talk in the part of herbicides and the control of plagues. But this is something that we are studying, taking a little time. And I think that in the future, we can have something to also compete in this market. Vitia in itself continues with its investment plan in a way that is very intense, both in our P PDI and our RDI and our commercial platform. We have been developing a very intensive work when we talk about the commercial platform of having more of this team, making it variable for them to have a great performance within the market. For you to have an idea, this week we put, we did a VIT expert, we put within VTA of around a hundred researchers and consultants of all Brazil. This is a work that is very, has been very intense in this teaching, talking about the part of biodefensors and obviously talking about the fertilizers, biological fertilizers. And then we have been working in an intensive way. I think Enrique can talk about this in the issue of development of new technologies and improvement of the current technologies around about our part of biodefensors. Now I pass the floor to Alexandri. Good morning to you all. Well, entering into the details of the financial performance, we had a trimester, a quarter, where we had an increase in the line of foliar fertilizers, bio, bio pesticides, and inoculants in the Biological fertilizers we see have a robust increase despite the challenging scenario, like we said, this scenario of this year would had a lot of instability for the producer, and it this generates a more position of being conservator, but despite this, the producer saw or has been seeing a structural change in the technology of the biologicals as being something to be pursued even in these challenging scenarios in terms of the costs. We had a performance that was negative in the organo minerals and soil micronutrients in this quarter in terms of revenue. These are two lines that are connected to the investment in the soil. The organo minerals is the line that connects with all this story of the market of NPK. And they've had an increase of surprise that was very substantial after the beginning of the war between Russia and Ukraine, reaching levels that would pressure the rentability of the agriculture. This caused a run to reduce the usage of fertilizers in the soil. At the same time, like Yuson said, the industry with the lack of scarcity tried to buy everything that they could. And now we had a market of fertilizers, soil fertilizers that was very unstable throughout this first nine months of the year. 
And this, for us, caused a certain difficulty in the operations, given that in the end, we use this as an input. And this is an important component in the cost of the organominerals. The um, soil micronutrients also had an impact of prices. And due to being a less technological product, it is one where the agriculture in this year the farmer tried to reduce the consumption, even in like in the NPK and the organominerals, like I said, the fertilizers, soil fertilizers as a whole. This was a year that the farmer is trying to reduce the consumption as, as much as they can. But I think that already going to the next slide, the positive part is that the revenue of the company has, is, comes from these two main lines of biological products and fertilizers, foliar fertilizers. The, the main focus of investment, development, commercial development, that is from us. And we were able, with this in growth in these two lines, to keep a consolidated result, a very interesting result. It's worth to highlight that the line of biological products that in the last quarter had a margin due to the mix so that was smaller from the same trimester of the previous year. And that in this trimester, in this quarter, as you can see, there is a margin that is practically the same one as the previous year. What is connected is in line with our view of the market that this product is still not suffering a pressure of rentability, of price, of profit. The market in this line is very big. Our challenge is, as Wilson said, is to teach people, is to explore producers who do not know the technology and have not used it previously. Now talking about soil micronutrients, in this line we were able, despite the, the downfall, we were able to to have the margin that was capped. We were, did not have an impact from the point of view of results in this downfall, but in the line of organominerals, it is one that we have been talking about in the last quarter. It is a line that we had a lot of difficulty to operate in all this instability. We had a little improve in terms of growth, margin but it's better than the other quarter but it's not what we hoped for to be the margin of the market we truly hope that this market will be normalized for the next crops we believe in the technology but with this volatility of price in the main input of technology that is npk we are having a certain difficulty in the operation in this line. Entering the part of selling general and administrative expenses, like Wilson said, we are restructuring our commercial team, expanding all of our structure, industrial structure, and obviously of support. Also the structure of administrative support walks alongside it to aim to prepare for many years of growth in the biological product. So we have a rhythm that is very important of growth in the expenses, but it's very controlled when we think in relation to the revenue of the group. This is a strategy. We, I always give this guiding that we invest on this st commercial structure and of team some when at uh, the measure that we grow in sales we calibrate this as to not compromise the profit but it's not still the moment for us to hold up our expenses to increase the generation of money we are calibrating this to continue to grow and invest at the same time and i think that just to explain here this quarter had an event the company had an aircraft in a model King Gear, a very old one. And the decision of the administration was to sell this aircraft. And instead of the aircraft that is important 
for our strat commercial strategy in terms of proximity of clients, we entered in the model of sharing. So instead of seeking a newer aircraft, we decided to have a sharing model that is more efficient and the sale of this aircraft result had an exceptional result in this quarter. Okay, and the adjusted IBITDA is that even in a challenging scenery with a performance that is not as much as we wanted it to be in this line of soil fertilizers, we are able to deliver a growth, a result that is significant. And also an increase in the ABITDA margin in due to the growth in the lines that we focus on, which are those who are more profitable. Updating here our investment projects, we are going on with the amplifying of our biological plant. We had an estimate that it would stay, it would be ready in this year, but it this is reviewed estimate is that it would be ready in the first quarter of the next year. This delay was somehow a possibility that we were expecting from the beginning of the approval because we know that this market is not 100% normalized. So we still face delays in the delivery of some equipment, important equipment for this amplifying, but this is within our planning, given that the availability of the capability this year would be only as a way to have a flexibility, a greater flexibility. It would not be necessary. The important is that this capability is available for the next crop. And this, without a doubt, is going to happen. Uh, the only thing that we want to say is that we had a change in the cap capacity. There was a change that was not so small. We changed in this second phase that is estimated that it would reach 5,000 kilos per li or liters. This is a change due to the estimate of mix and productivity of the lines. and entering in our performance of cash flow management and in depth and as it has been a positive role, the agro it has in good crops, the liquid producers, we have been having a great performance from the point of view of receiving. We have generated more than a hundred million of money that is sufficient to be able to support our organic growth without pressuring the growth and we close this quarter with less than one EBIT. I think that the number would be even is 0 0.8, a smaller number than what we had foreseen in the period of last year after the entrance of the resources from IPU. And then we see here this is well capitalized. Like I always mention, it's not in a level that is great of growth. We should be in one that is greater, but right now it's ended up being an advantage for us to have this flexibility on the point of view of the structure of the balance in a moment of a certain uncertainty. It's very important to have this. This can be useful for us to take profit and some kind of opportunities to acquire some things in the next quarters. And talking about the financial result and taxes, we had in the quarter an increase of the net financial result of in the basic taxes in this rates in these months and then in the nine months sorry actually in the quarter we had a result that was smaller than in the same area of the last month but in the nine months 
we had a sampling that was a little higher and this expense is given that the level of increase was close and this is due to the expenses due to the difference of the basic rate of the nine months of these years in relation to the previous year. We had a performance that was more effective in relation to the aliquot of the company. This was already expected due to the fact that last year, the operations of Organo Minerals of Vitoria and Microbiologicals of Jatabiki were not positive. They had not this, and this year they're still not positive. They were have a presumed profit and now they're in the real profit. So we have a one that is in the tri tributes that is better than the last year and adding this to an increase in growth, a smaller growth of the financial expenses and the income tax in relation to our operational growth, we had a very strong growth in terms of liquid profit, net profit, reaching a margin, a net margin of the nine months of 15.8%, a result in the quarter also that is very expressive in nominal terms and in terms of growth in relation to the last to last year's quarter. Now I pass for Nihiki to talk about our expenditure of DI. Thank you very much. So VTA continues with the proposal of continuing to increase the investments in research, development, and innovation, mainly focusing in the development of products, biological products, for the biological market. So for the biological defenders and also fertilizers, biological fertilizers. So in relation to the investments compared to the previous year, the total of investments, we had an increase in the increment of 42% in the investment, investment RDI in relation to the nine months, the first nine months of 2021. We stratified the lines of biologicals and fertilizers, the biological products have an increase of 34% in relation to the months of 2021. And the fertilizers, we had an increase of 72% in relation to the previous year. This increase was more specifically due to an investment that we did in the department of R&DI, of fertilizers very invested in an equipment that was very important to make faster the development of new ways and to have the special fertilizers. This was the equipment to predict the prototypes that are being developed. In relation to the investment of R and D I and the revenue of the net revenue, we had a variation of 0.4% in relation to the same period of the previous year. And in relation to the launches or registries of the technologies in 2022, we had a regulation of two new products, macrobiological products two new parasitoids to control plagues, mainly for the control of the plague of the eucalyptus worm and also for those from the sugarcane and the microbiological that is our biological fertilizer, OMLS, which is a potentializer of nutrients in the soil for plants. And we also received six new recommendations approvals of recommendations, technical recommendations for new biological uses and targets for our portfolio of biological defenses. I give the floor back to Wilson. Frieza, sorry. Okay, from our part of the stock market, we had a quarter of recovery in our price. We understand that we are 
this is justified, this downfall that happened, the, this was not followed by our results. So we are comparing the trimester by trimesters. This was recurrent of the increase in the results. We had continue with our company that is healthy, that is favorable one. And talking about our reselling, repurchasing plan we executed into the third of the nine, we had 36.5% of the limit. There was a pro approved limit. We had a plan there. We have 12 months and we are continuing to use it in a strategic way to benefit the people, the, the people who are in the stock market of our base in case there is some kind of important problem there of video with the market. Now we are going to begin the Q&A session for investors and analysts. If you wish to make any kind of question, please click in the Q&A in the bottom of the screen and write your question. Our first question comes from Mr. Ricardo Ori, student from FEA USP. Why Vitia is losing revenue in Mato Grosso, even with the growth of 20%, comparing the nine, month, nine months of this year with the months of 2021? Okay, good morning. So, Ricardo, we, as we have passed to you, we are promoting a reforming in our professionals, reformulation in our professionals, food professionals. We had a style, let's say, implemented there for some time in Mato Grosso, in which it had a focus that was above the, the great clients. Not that we have lost it. In no way, we are structuring this in a way that is much more dynamic now for 2023. And we ended up deciding to change this way of work to work in a more intense way on top of the medium average producers and in the distribution. So what happened? Great sales that were done in the previous year in the 2021 in Mato Grosso, it was above on top of these great farmers, the great groups of Mato Grosso, and these sales are important, but they were ones that were very like commodities. So it would generate an excellent revenue, but effectively the result was very small for the company. And we changed this. That is why now taking effectively Mato Grosso in itself, we had, let's say, a volume of selling. Now we are going to finish the year with a volume like so. We had here in the harvest of 2021-22 with a result that is much more interesting for the company, focusing on what we said to you, the issue of the biodefensors, biological fertilizers, and the foliar fertilizer. Our next question from, comes from Guilherme Avila. Guilherme Avila, by site analyst, could you give a view of the expected level of the growth of biological defenders for the year of 2022? Do you have a gain in market share and the view for 2023? Look, we, Guilherme, we had their great work done by Cop Life showing that let's say that this market can grow both in this year and in the other years. What I can say to you is that VTA will be more efficient than this. And we hope that for with the investments that we did now, 
thinking in 2023, we are going to be more efficient than what is being projected, let's say, by the guys from crop life. Our next question comes from Mr. Gustavo Nedel, investor. A regulamentation of biologicals that allows the production and commercializations in farms concerns Vitya. Look, uh, even I'm going to ask more help here from our Enrique. This does not concern Vitya. Actually, we have been feeling in a clear way a lack of, let's say, of will from those who did this type of investment. This week, we had something that was very important in the state of Goiás, in the region of Rio Verde, which is the group GASP and GAS. And this group reached, was able to do some sessions in this sense, insertions in this sense, alongside Solo Bill, that was a company that was selling this technology. And now it is very clear to them that this was the investment, the wrong investment, something that was very important for us that we are now more familiarized with this. Knowing this is I have been talking the fertilizer, the biological fertilizer, the biological defender of this year. Okay, you need to be certain that this is not going to be the one that we are going to present in 23. And what we are going to present in 24 will be better than 23. So when we think on this issue of a production, it ends up losing its sense in terms of generation of technology. Now, Vita has more than 70 professionals invested in PDI. When we talk about the production of microorganisms, the process of fermentation within, let's say, an environment that is highly regulated, administrated. The thing is not only about microorganisms that we are producing there. There are other effects about metabolites that will help in the performance of these microorganisms. So it's what I always say, the property that tried this, if the, it does not go through a procedure that is truly industrial, professionalized, a company, they're going to close. We have seen this previously with inoculant. We have no bio company there that was formed 20 years ago, but everybody's closed. Uh, there are fermenters in these issues. So we do not see this. We have no concerns regards to this, to this practice that began, let's say, to be adopted, but it has no safety for its continuity. And it's interesting that we had in the result that was generated by Embrapa, Dr. Marianne, that basically 60, 90 days ago, from all the samples that were collected and we had in many properties, none of them had the microorganisms that said that it was being produced. So this is something that truly won't happen. Perfect, just to complement here and reinforce what Wilson mentioned, the level of investment in research and development is very high, but inviabilizes in agriculture's to do this investment in, in P and DI, to seek microorganisms and inoculants and such, the level of investment in the industry is that it has all the control of all the failures in production is very high. So this is another factor that invalidizes this type of investment in the properties. And truly there are many research institutions series and researchers with a lot of knowledge on the theme of biological control, diseases, plants and plagues, and also in the area of inoculants that did many works and they already published articles showing that this type of practice is technically inviolable to the lack of quality.
remembering that to make question, you can just click in the Q&A button. Our next question comes from Mr. Pedro Luis Silva Fonseca, analyst from Cell Side of XP Inc. They, he has two questions. The first one is, could you give a little bit of more detail on the chart of requests in the court in the fourth quarter? I know that you do not have guidance, but the qualitative of volume and change in the revenue mix, mix would be good. They commented on the difficulty in the organo minerals. Any kind of line could compensate this downfall in the fourth quarter. The second question is, and Hickey commented on the increase of r and DI and the acquisition of new machines. Could you give more information on this increase of r and DI? Does it implicate on the increase of pipe of launching? Is it a new line or, in, or just an inflationary effect? Look, Pedro, talking about the chart of requests, we have this. It's in line of what we have projected for the year. So we are living in a moment, let's say, post-election, the elections had a, let's say, a disturbance within the market. The entrance of this current government made the agriculture, the farmer more concerned. And what I can say to you is that we have this chart. We are working so that this chart can be done we have charts that are 100 let's say firm the ones alongside the rural producers vitia has a characteristic of helping these producers and we had a chart that is with our distributors obviously this we need to conciliate with them alongside our team and make this work on what i can say in terms of our chart is that we had one in line with what we projected for the year. In relation to organo minerals, the substitution for other products, this is what we are working on. The organo minerals, truly we are having a little difficult, a great difficulty due to the points that we have already talked about to you to you. And now when we talk about the organo minerals, we are talking about volume. So we didn't we work in micronutrients, we work with biodefenders to have lines within our company to surpass this downfall in the volume of organo minerals, we do not have the possibilities. And now we work in a intense way because we reach effectively our limit that is projected for the year. Sorry, sorry, I'm going to pass to you. Okay, thank you very much. In relation to the investment that we did, the equipment is to increase in the speed or to deliver of results in new ways. So just to give an example, we had some tests to verify the stability of new ways given traditionally 90 days. With this equipment, we have reduced to 10 days. So the gaining speed that is very big to deliver, the, to deliver the results of new ways and adaptation of formulas of the PND and the fertilizers. Also, there is an effect, inflationary effect of the cost, but a great part of the increase of investments in CapEx and also people in the valuing of our team of PND and in the moment of partnerships that we have with research institutions and universities that increase in the area. Our next question from Mr. Joaquin Atier, cell site analyst from City. Good morning, Wilson and Alexandre. Congratulations for the results. What does the management from Beach Scout in relation to the NPK in the next quarters? What can we hope from here on in relation to the line of organomirons? And lastly, could you give us an idea of the relationship of Ca CAPEX of 2023? Thank you. Okay, what is happening? We had, to me, it's very clear that the increase of 
price in the NPKs was not for the lack of inputs. It was more by the perception of the great players in this world that they could improve their result aiming to take part of the result of the rural product. This is the technique. There was a substantial increase talking effectively of the pandemic itself due to the difficulty of extraction and logistics. But the greater weight of this was that the relationship of exchange. When this, let's say, when we began to have a finishing in the pandemic, it was less complicated. There was a tendency of downfall of NPQs. And then there was the war of Ukraine with Russia. And then we see a new speculation that affects the potassium. It would be something crazy. And then this did not happen. So now we have the prices of NPKs going down. They are not going to reach the prices that we have seen two to three years ago. They do not return to have a potassium of $300 in that moment. There was truly a super offer and a demand that was a little bit more safe. But we understand that we are going to reach and have something in the middle. This is the point of the issue. And when you go to the nitrogen, you have a problem of supply. So there is a lot of speculation within the market, but we do not see this growth in prices. We believe that it's going to stir in the average. It's interesting because when we talk about the, our part of organic minerals, and just to clarify to you, we it, have been working a lot for a long time in this. Obviously, we had a unit with a capability, let's say, that is smaller of production. And we have lived very well within this market. So the good was that this market had hadn't these pressures with the increase of inputs or the downfall. So what we understand is that we are going to have a normal year in 2022. This is a market where everybody's going to play a little bit cooler in this offer that we have now for more here it's going to end here we're now entering in a nutrition for coffee nutrition for sugar cane we're going to have our harvest now and the market is normalized so now we hope for 2023 the harvest 23 24 a market that is easier to operate and i think that an important point when we talk about the Vitia operation is that it did some important lessons in terms of Fabrici and also in the commercial issue. So we hope, for example, a year of 23-24 harvest with a functional normality of this line within our company. So just to talk about the issue of CapEx, we are not aiming to have a great investment next year. We are going to try some marginal investments of reinforcement of our company structure, but we do not hope to have an increase. We do not have a precise number to pass of guidance, but this is the expectation. The expectation is that we have a capex that is smaller than this year, but but not as substantially smaller because we still hope a good harvest. We hope to have growth for the next year. So we need to continue to invest, but we do still do not have kind of capex of greater relevance like we had this year. I think we had the CD that passed of 20 million the sole investment in the year of next previous year, we had the finaling of the plant with a capex of greater relevance and for the next year should be an development an investment that is more diversified in the industrial land. Our next question comes from Mr. Guilherme Avila. 
by side analyst from Tarpon. Could you talk about the increase of the commercial strength of the company? For which lines is this commercial strength turned to? Guilherme, this issue of the commercial strength has two important points. Obviously, we complement and we do this all the time. We have been reaching some great partners of the Brazilian market. Even this week, we have reached two great partners here in Brazil and the other outside Brazil. So automatically, we need to reinforce have commercial reinforcements of our commercial teams so that we can give the necessary support for these new partners within our company. I'm sorry, Thiago, could you come back a little bit to this issue of the strength and what is the complement of the question? For which lines is this new commercial line geared towards? So as I said, we are doing some kind of segregations within the company. So we are gathering specific forces in our issue of organo renewals. We are also creating a specific force for the segment of microbiologicals. We had, we gave a growth in this fabrication market. We had gains, important gains in terms of productivity. So we are beginning to work on this thesis of having some kind of segment, even as to not contaminate the team itself that we have. And the strength, the force is centered in the rest of the products. So there is no, let's say, a, something that is unique. We are hiring these just for the biodefense sectors. No, this strength, this force has the objective of generating more deals of biodefenders and fertilizers, special fertilizers and foliar fertilizers. Our next question comes from Mr. João Festas, by site analyst from Ori Capital. What type of challenges do you have from the point, commercial point of view to support your growth? Could you give some kind of detail on your commercial strategy in a perspective of medium to long term? Look, challenges. I think we always have challenges. So now when we talk about this commercial strength, to un we're understanding the movementations as a whole within the company according to what you have there. We aggregated very important partnerships thinking about the harvest 23-24 and by seeing this we're going to equate these strengths to give support in the business obviously we have within let's say within our strategy commercial strategy where we need to be more effective where we have a certain deficiency in terms of partners where we are not with a coherent team in the technical part this will happen throughout time what i can tell you is that vitia despite being a highly structured company as to the commercial issue without a doubt now in our segment the company that has more people in the field or is among the two three companies with more people in the field has a lot of gaps to be filled. But as I always say, it's not like Capia, it's to put the good person there to truly exercise the demand that we need. Our next question comes from Mr. João Saldanha, by site analyst from Sul America Investments. This was the first semester of biological products that equate to the other segments the growth of defensive biologicals of the third quarter from the, this year to the last year when it was below the, what, 50 to 70% that we indicated. Was it cap? First, we'd like to send a hug to Juan. And now I'm going to pass to Frizo, which is the expert in the plannings and the analysis of these issues. Well, it's our tendency. We, without a doubt, hope to have a growth that is more accelerated in the biological part. Not the, it's not that the part of spell is special 
fertilizer is not going to grow. It has a potential of growing in a very good rhythm, but the biological, we have a growth that is more accelerated without a doubt and not seeing this basis pressure. This comes from this sustenance, it is natural that somehow this line will go in terms of results representing more than the 50%. Obviously, this trimester is on where the biological has a lot of representativity, but this is this expectation. We are just in the beginning of this structural migration to the biological, Wilson said, we have evolved in the issue of the biological treatment where it can be inserted in these there are some initiatives for this to substitute the biological, not only in the fungicides, and there is much to come in this technologies projects, like we said, that are more efficient. So the future, without a doubt, for the biological is going to be one of great opportunities. Our next question from Mr. Ricardo Orio. Student from Fair USP, the downfall of biological margin nine months, 21 to 22, was the worsening of mix or price? Actually, we commented, I said in the tr previous trimester, we had an issue of mix in the projects. We have projects with a distinct margin in the line of biologicals. It's not a sole product. And sometimes a line has a better performance than the other. This is natural due to the conditions of the market. I think this trimester, this quarter, the margin was practically the same as in the previous year. So the fluctuation in these levels is something that is natural. This is normal to happen. Our last question comes from Mr. Khalil, by side analyst from Rich Capital. Could you comment a little bit as the, of the incorporation of the Agro 21 and comment a little bit of the Mali X representative in this quarter? Oh, I did not put this data now. I don't know if you have Frizo. I do not have this data here. Mali X is a project that is a launch. Obviously, every launch, you do not have a performance that is as absurd due to the issue of work that needs to be developed alongside the rural producers. But I see the following. This is a product that worked and it's already presenting great results. But I do not have here in precise number to tell you, I can say something silly if I try to say something. We are not opening, let's say, with this detail, this much detail, what we have approved to disclose the details of the performance of some specific products. What we can say, I think that what Wilson said, we already had a representativity in our line of biological fertilizers. They had a performance, interesting performance until now, and we hope that it's going to contribute even more in the next year for the line of biological fertilizers. We understand that this project, project is being well accepted and it was a success launch. I think we are going to study, maybe to just not have this issue of opening too much all the lines and to have a certain difficulty, but we are going to study in the end of the year to give a number in relation to the revenue of the lunches. So the Q&A is now closed. We would like to pass the floor to Mr. Wilson Homanini to do his final 
comments. Thank you very much to you all who are with us and have been observing video. What we always say is the following, we are in a market that is very interesting. The Brazilian agro, the agribusiness is the very different. The video is a company that has more than 50 years working to take effectively results, effective results as a whole. This is our certainty. The product that we put in the field, we want the producer to have the clear feeling that that was worth. And working with all the responsibility, the opening of this capital left us even more firm in the governance procedure a company that, that uses ethics, responsibility, that likes this, that's it. We have a year of 23 with a new government, a government that is feared by the agribusiness. You know that, but I think that things are still in the same way that we need to work more and do more. That's it. This is the mark that is the... What I wanted to say, and once more, thank you very much. The video conference is closed. The area of relationships with investors is open to answer any other questions. We thank for the participation of all and have a good day.